The Loop Deck Live. Imagine having a touchscreen stream deck in the middle, being able to swap profiles with the buttons on the bottom, and then the best feature of all, being able to control your stream audio with these rotation knobs on the side. You can control your microphone volume, your overall PC sound, your game specifically, your Spotify. This is an amazing device for streamers and content creators. Amazing! And I'm really looking forward to going over all the features together with you. Now, if you have any questions about streaming or you just want to join me on stream, I stream every week on Twitch. The link will be in my description and I would greatly appreciate it if you would follow me and join me on one of my next streams. Now, this video is sponsored by Loop Deck, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to give my honest opinion on this product. I've had this product for a few months already and the reason I didn't make a video yet is because I was waiting for these controls for your audio on the side because that wasn't a feature in the beginning. I talked about this with them. A bunch of other streamers probably talked about this too. So they implemented a way to control the audio of separate programs and that really changed everything for me. We all know everyone is gonna compare this to the Stream Deck. Should I buy a Stream Deck? Should I buy a Loop Deck? And it's also very clear that this is meant to be a Stream Deck competitor. So is it worth it over a Stream Deck? Well, the answer is one that many people hate to hear and that's that it depends. If the Stream Deck has specific features that you really want, well, then you've got your answer for yourself. But if it doesn't, then you just want the device to control your stream, control your PC, and you're also a content creator, then this is extremely useful. It has integrations with a bunch of programs like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and then of course, you have these rotation knobs on the side, and that is something the Stream Deck doesn't have, and which can be a deal breaker. Let's say you're streaming, someone sends you a link, you click on it, and then it is this, the longest and loudest burp ever created. Now, of course, look at this. You're gonna wanna watch this. You can just go to your loop deck and change the volume like this. Now, this is extremely handy for streamers. You can do the same thing while streaming to reduce the music volume or to change your microphone volume if people say that you're too quiet or too loud. <coughs> Let's take a look at what you get when you order this device and then let's go over the software to see what the possibilities are. There's not much in the box to be honest. It's empty. You've got your instruction manuals and then under that there is the loop deck. When you take that out of the box there is one USB-C cable and one USB to USB-C adapter. One of the sides of the USB-C cable goes into the loop deck and then you can either connect the other side to your PC through USB-C or through USB by using the adapter. Hey, future video nerd here. I forgot to mention that the loop deck also comes with a stand. So yeah, now before being able to use the device, you need to go to the loop deck website to downloads, then to loop deck software and user guides, then to loop deck live, which is this version. And then right here, you can find Windows download or Mac download and then click on the latest version. Now, I'm not going to install this right now because I already did, so I'm going to cancel it. But I want to show you something else. When you scroll down a bit, you will see streaming software. And for example, when we click on OBS Studio, you will see that you can download a WebSocket. If you do not download this, then you will not see the OBS Studio options in your Loop Deck software, and you will not be able to control your software. If it doesn't work for me, I don't give a damn. When you first launch the Loop Deck software, you will have to make an account and log in with that. As you see in the top right, I am logged in with my account and then on the bottom left you can click on the settings icon you can go to account and then there you can click on add new log in with your twitch account then add spotify if you have that this way these are linked and then you will not need to do this later so by default the loop deck will have a bunch of stuff pre-installed on the top right you can see application and when you click on that you can see all the default integrations when you click on one of them for example obs studio then it will change to the obs studio your profile and by default the loop deck has something that's called dynamic mode what the hell is even that now by default the loop deck controls or the profile it was on changed depending on which program was activated on your pc so if you went to Photoshop, then all the controls of the loop deck would be for Photoshop. If you then clicked on Spotify, then you would see all the Spotify controls, 
which are these. Now this is great for content creators that are going from Lightroom to Photoshop to Premiere Pro, but you can already see the problem, right? Streamers were complaining that they were playing their game and then the profile switched and then they went to OBS Studio to change something and it changed again and stuff like that. That wasn't really handy, so they added this switch to turn off the dynamic mode, then the interface will not change when you go to another program, so this way streamers can set up their whole streaming suit, sweet. So this way streamers can make their whole streaming control center with audio settings, with stream settings, maybe they can add other pages for other things. This is a change that was very welcome and it also shows that the Loop Deck team is actively working on improving this for streamers specifically. Now let's turn on the dynamic mode for a second because I want to show you some things the Loop Deck can do. So when it's turned on it will adapt to whatever is happening on the PC so when I click next to this program somewhere on the desktop then you will see that the Loop Deck has already changed. So for example right here I see a folder icon if I click on it I will open my window Windows Finder. If I want to make a screenshot of a specific area, I click on this icon and then I can just make a screenshot. But then when I go to another program like Photoshop, for example, let me click on it and you will see that the Loop Deck will adjust once Photoshop is launching. But I want to focus on what streamers are mainly going to use this for, which is making one profile for OBS Studio, Twitch, Spotify and all your other audio controls. So the first thing I will do is making sure the dynamic mode is turned on. Then I'm gonna click on OBS Studio on my second screen to make sure that the OBS Studio profiles are activated. And then I'm gonna deactivate the dynamic mode to make sure that it stays on OBS Studio no matter what I do. So right here we have the device, then next you have the application and we turned off the dynamic mode so the loop deck is locked at OBS Studio, but we don't have OBS Studio selected right here. So we can search for OBS Studio, you can do the same thing for Streamlabs OBS or no matter which program you want to use right here. Now that we have loop deck live, we have OBS Studio. The next thing you want to select is your profile. I'm going to make a new clean profile and then I'm going to explain you everything. So let's click on this drop down here and then click on new empty profile and let's call it OBS Studio Tutorial YouTube. Okay, let's click on save and right now is where it becomes complicated. So here in the middle you have your loop deck, right? Now when we click in the middle we can set up these macro buttons when we go back and then we click on these knobs at the side, then we can set up what these knobs do. We can choose what the rotation should do, and we can choose what the press action should do, so when you press on the button. Now let's go back. Besides the middle right here and the knobs on the side, we also have these buttons on the bottom, and when we click on that, we can set up different actions for that too. Now let's go back, you can choose how you wanna use this. Everyone has a choice, make the right choice the main way of using this the way it's intended is like this on the left you see press actions and then rotation adjustments so when we click on the middle these are the press action buttons right so on the left for example we can go to system then we can go to activate and then for example right here we can choose activate photoshop and we can drag this here and then we will have a button for photoshop as you see and when i press on that photoshop is launching on my computer Nice. When we go back, we can click on the rotation knobs right here. And then here we see rotation adjustments. And that's everything you can do with these ones in the middle. Now here on the top, you can see actions. This is a drop down. And right here, you can add several basic functions. So for example, windows, when we click on this, we will add windows actions on the left. And this includes things like media, volume level or system brightness, things like that. We can click on actions again and then we can add Spotify and then after that we can add Twitch for example. If for some reason you don't see it here or it doesn't work, don't forget that when you go to settings and then go to account, you can log in with your Twitch and your Spotify account right here. So we were in the rotation knob settings, right? So let's click on them again and then for example we can go to Windows to media and then volume level and we can drag this to this rectangle right here. So right now when I go here to my window sound and I rotate this knob you will see that I'm changing it with the loop deck. Amazing. And for example here special sources this is the audio that you've added in your mixer in OBS studio and right here I see mic aux this is my microphone I can just drag this right here then release it and when I rotate the knob 
you'll see that I'm changing this audio source. And let's click on back again. When you click in the middle, we added some buttons right here, right? But on the bottom, you can see add new page. You can click add new page, give it a name, click on add, and then you can add different things right here. And now there are a few ways you can use to browse through pages. The first way is simply sliding on your loop deck. As you see in the software, you see these two pages and we have the same ones on the loop deck when we slide. Now, this is a bit weird since there's plastic between each touchscreen button. So it feels weird to slide on that. This is, this is crazy. This is getting weird, bro. I don't know if I want to continue doing this, bro. Like, man, this is this. So another thing you could do is going to the left and then going to page links, then touch screen pages, because that's this right here. And then here you see touch page one and two, which are these on the bottom. So let's give you an overview again. We go to the touch pages right here. And then for example, on touch page one, we add the link to page two. And then on page two, we add the link to page one. So then on the loop deck you see right now, we are on page two. Here is the button to page one. And the same thing goes for the rotation knobs. You can also add multiple pages right here. Now there is one more thing you need to understand and that's the buttons right here on the bottom. Now, of course you could add basic stuff like this. When you click on it, you could go to windows and then to system and then choose whatever that's here and then release it. And that is a simple button. When I click on it, I will open the Windows Explorer, but that's not really what it's intended for. It's for adding workspaces on the right and then binding them to these buttons on the bottom. Right now we were in workspace one and it's the only workspace we have, but we can click on the plus icon and then make one called stream audio. And then right here, you could add everything you will ever need to manage your audio on stream. So for example, you can go to system, activate, and then right here, activate Spotify, drag it over here, and that's one button already. Now you can add a bunch of things right here, but these workspaces are a completely new workspace as the name says. So when I click on workspace one again, you will see that this is what we added before. Now this also includes the functions from these knobs. So one workspace is the settings of the middle of the screen and these knobs. So how do you manage this? Well, you click on the buttons on the bottom and then you drag workspace one to button one. And then for example, stream audio to button two. And right now you will see that on my loop deck button one and two are glowing. When I click on one, I get this. And when I click on two, I get the other thing we added for the stream audio control. When I click on one again, I go back here. Now, why would you need this to organize your loop deck, to organize your whole workflow and to get different workflows, as they say, to manage everything. Now, a big feature that's missing here, and they told me that they are working on it, but apparently it's not that easy to implement. You cannot change the icons of the default functions right now. The way you can do it right now is making a custom action and then changing the icon with this plus icon right here. Then you click on choose a file and then you browse for an image you want to add. Then you can zoom in, then reposition it a bit. And then when you click on save, it will be the icon for this. Then of course you need to select the function of this button. So this is a shortcut. You can click right here and then click on something in your keyboard and then it will be a shortcut for that. Or you can click on this and then choose a bunch of other things. Now this is a complete macro editor. So you can choose a delay, for example, of hundred milliseconds. Now we do not need the delay right now. So we can delete this and then we can click on the plus icon to create a new one. And then on the left, for example, you see Twitch create a clip. We can drag this over here and then this will be a macro button for Twitch create a clip. So this way you can add an icon to a simple function. You can give it a name, for example, clip, and then you can click on save. And then right now we have a custom macro button that's called clip and we can drag this to our loop deck. And then right now, when we go to that specific page, you will see that it's a button on my loop deck. And then since I open Twitch right now, you can see that there are a bunch of other things you can do with your Twitch. For example, clearing your chat, putting your chat in slow mode, putting your chat in follower only mode, and then also send chat message, which is very useful. You can click on the plus icon and then has something right here. For example, exclamation mark commands. You click on save, you add this to the loop deck and then let's go to my Twitch. And then when a viewer asks you what your commands are, you can just click on this button it will post it in chat. And then as you see, my chatbot replies with my commands. The thing I'm going to use this for is I'm going to make macro buttons for all my videos. And then when a viewer comes into my chat and he asks me for the best audio filters, 
in OBS Studio. I just go to my OBS Studio tutorials, I click on audio filters, and then I will automatically post a link to that guide in my Twitch chat. By the way, this is just a perfect opportunity. I'm sorry, but if you want to follow me on Twitch, you tell me what you think. I don't think so. Click this follow button right here. It's really simple. You will get a notification when I go live and I would greatly appreciate that. Let's go back to loop deck, click on back right here. And there is one thing left to show you and that's adding your audio controls on your loop deck. When we click on the rotation knobs right here, you see that we have one dial page, right? And we can add a bunch of things right here, but we can make a new page. And instead of adding a normal page, we can add volume mixer output. Then click on add and then click on the page right here. Now you see that it is empty right here, but it will not be empty on your loop deck. Now when we go to our Windows sound settings, let's right click here, go to sound settings, then scroll to the bottom to app volume and device preferences. Now let's make it a bit bigger. All the programs that you see right here that are making sound on your PC will be on the loop deck. But we don't see it on my loop deck yet and that's because I'm not on this page on my loop deck. We can go back, we can go here to these buttons, then we can go to the left, let's close everything to make it a bit more clear and then right here you see page links, then we have touchscreen pages which are these pages right here but we also have dial pages and that's these pages right here of these dials on the side. Then dial page 2 is this one right here, the orange page. And now we can go back, go to these buttons and then drag dial page to button 7 for example. Now you see that this dial page is empty, but as I said, it will just be filled with all programs that are active on your PC. So right now when we click on button 7 on this loop deck, it will go to this dial page and we will see the programs on our PC. Now one extra thing, because we don't see our microphone right here. So what you want to do now is you want to make sure that your microphone, let me grab OBS Studio, is a separate source right here. You will probably know how to do this, but you can go to the settings, audio, mic auxiliary, and then add your microphone right there. And now when we go to loop deck, we can go to rotation adjustments, to OBS Studio, to special sources and right here we see mic aux. So right now let's go back, go to the dial pages, go to the dial page that's orange because that's the one that will be your windows sounds and then you drag your mic aux to the first position or whatever position you want. You release it right here on this rectangle and then right now on the loop deck you will see that first you have mic aux because that's what we added right here in the software and then all the empty ones will be filled with things that are playing on your PC. So your game, Spotify, then your general PC sound. This is Windows sound, so I think this is like error sounds and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it is. So that way we have complete control over our audio and we have the touch things in the middle. To my knowledge, streamers are people who want to customize everything exactly to their own needs. So the fact that you can do so much stuff with this, despite it being complicated, for me it's a positive thing instead of a negative one. If you have any questions about this or you're looking for recommendations or stuff like that, you can ask it in the comments or you can ask it in the Discord. We are almost at 10,000 members, so you can join that. People are helping each other there. It's filled with streamers. It's a great place to be if you're interested in streamers. Streaming. And if you want to buy a loop deck, there will be a link on top of my description. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch if you're interested in streaming. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you in the next one. Have a nice day. The video nerd made the best audio banana video ever, but I still couldn't manage to get it all working. <laughs> well, was it the best one ever then? But thanks, man.